High on life is a drug trip that only becomes temporary for five minutes, and then you're grounded right back into reality. Maybe it's just me, but I've grown out of the series that Justin Roiland is most known for. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about House of Cosby's. Uh, Cosby's 1 and 5 have to use the bathroom too. You've been in there all day, okay? You're pissing me off! Theo, I have to go poop in the toilet. And the thing is, Rudy, I have to go pee pee, you see? Now, I'm not saying that Justin Roiland isn't funny. But you'll see where I'm getting at. So the game opens up with a boomer shooter style mini game before the actual game begins. It's a very engaging shooter, I'm not even gonna lie to you folks. I've had some fun fighting ways with my ex-wife's boyfriends. After a while, you hear a strange knock on the door. Makes it seem like someone's actually there. You get your paranoid schizophrenia pumping through the roof. The voices will never stop. Even when you open that door, the voices will never go away. What are you doing in there? Why is your door locked? You know exactly why my door is locked! The CIA will not be nabbing me today! So anyway, your sister walks in the room as you're playing the game and she tells you that your parents have left for their vacation. Or, uh, whatever. You go downstairs, she tells you that she's in charge, and you read the note. And <laughs> here's this note. We hope you know that we love you very much, but we know we can't support you if you're just gonna sit around playing video games all day. Now, this note will set the tone for the rest of the game. What do I mean by that? Well... I mean meta humor. There will be more than just one instance, trust me. They're even gonna make some real world references and they're gonna break the fourth wall. So you go to the store, get your party favors, and you get hit immediately with conflict as the main character. And you know what? I can respect that. It may be a very basic layout in storytelling, but it most certainly works and it brings in that nostalgia feeling that older games have that have this layout. So yeah, so you pick up your first weapon, Kenny. He pulls the kids' choice awards and you can finally understand his speech. So afterwards you do some shooting, you do some combat, you get the warp device and regroup back at home. This is when the plot will thicken. You gotta go to this random city in the galaxy by the name of Blim City. The goal is to take down the G3 cartel and prevent the human species from being turned into drugs. Now, hear me out. I don't believe we even produce enough chemicals to provide any euphoria. Like sure, we have dopamine and serotonin, but look at us. Find over parking spots. I live here. Well, get out. Work very tedious jobs in order to live. Need social stimulation in order to function in society. Hell, we even have our own government putting psyops in our own beer bottles. Like, I will not adhere to the Surgeon General. What war did they even serve in? What are you a general of? Hospital surgeries? I know I can't produce enough chemicals to make an alien get high. I have to eat a pack of chewing gum and drink cold water to even feel anything. <laughs> our brains are our worst enemy. And I learned that from putting a plant that you put on a pizza. Alright, I'm off track. So we find Gene Saruthian, the famous bounty hunter who's gonna help us in our journey to fight the G3 cartel. This guy is basically a freeloader. Like, he has no legs, he has th two eyes out of the three, they're only working. Like, yeah, he's definitely a freeloader. But, he gives us a neat little suit, because we get introduced with uh, the UI elements of the game and learn other mechanics. Ah, uh, no, the pop-up ads. Hey, yo, Gene, my man, you gotta get that desktop stripper off my screen! This is a family-friendly channel. My god. So we eventually get the activation lights to get introduced further into the world by starting our first bounty, Nine Torg. She's located in the slums. So let's go ahead and go up. Oh. Don't even think about going down to the slums. Yeah, this is a maintenance only shaft. So hey, uh, kid, uh, excuse me, can we get our, uh, we need to make our way into the slums, please? No. Hold on. So you really want to get into the slums, huh? Then shit a little bit for oh, Come on, come on. Don't, 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 don't make him answer this no, round. I wanna know. It's fine, we'll, we'll help. Okay, great. If you saw us at the bar, which of us would you ask out? These two guys are blocking my path because they are arguing on who's hotter than who. And I guess I'll choose Psychic Pebbles. Chose red, and let's go to- oh, okay. Fucking kid. Here, fresh meat. What's wrong, fresh meat? You scared of a little kid? Eh, yeah, I'm a little kid. Look at me. Look at me. Eh, you're scared of me? Oh, I'm scary. Not. <laughs> well, maybe I am. <laughs> You get your first achievement in the game called Fallout doesn't let you do this when shooting this guy Can he even scolds you when you start doing this now? Let me clarify there were children in the first two Fallout games The only reason they were removed because interplay couldn't get a European release Hell even when the kids were still in there you get a reputation that you can obtain called child killer You'll be putting yourself at a disadvantage really when you kill the kids in the game because bounty hunters will go after you and random encounters People won't talk to you. Like, it's it's definitely a disadvantage. So this dig at an old controversy just shows the age of the developers, if I'm gonna be honest. What's next? Are they gonna reference the Postal 1 level, the elementary school? 
<laughs> on an unrelated note, you know, Fallout 2 has an unused icon for the child killer perk. I have that pen on my corkboard. Pretty funny for 1998. So yeah, it turns out we were scammed. The kid that we shot was only 30 years old in alien years. Oh, it's fine. He was 30 years old, so don't feel too bad. 30 years old is still adolescence for our species, but it's not as bad as shooting like a five-year-old or something. So don't worry, you just did regular murder. And I so, you know, we dodged a bullet, but that kid sure didn't. So we go through the cannon fodder until we reach Knifey. We get introduced to the new mechanic of melee and traversal. Hmm. That's what knives do? Hmm. I guess that's what we get for being a racist. So we eventually reach Nine Tour. Her boss fight's pretty easy. The patterns that she has are pretty straightforward. You gotta avoid her attacks, shoot, glob shot, juggle, repeat. You have to use knifey to even avoid the pit of toxic waste. So after defeating Nine Torg, it's time to regroup back home and consult Gene for continuing the search of G3 higher ups. So he tells us to go to the pawn shop and get this dodge upgrade, which will come in handy for platforming as we go on further in the game. So Gene sets up a bounty 5000 for us, and we can start choosing our own bounties in whichever order you want to. And that's Douglas or Krubus. Now if you go with Krubus first, you get Gus. If you go with Douglas, you get Squeezy. So fun fact about this game, if you get Gus first and you start doing the Douglas puzzles, the Dr. Joopy puzzles, uh, he will not trust them. Your second kid's name was Swoopy. Yeah, that's what I said. Flimmy, Froopy, and Swoopy, here I come. You're halfway there. Keep going, you can do it. Oh, I can't wait to see my little Flimmy, Proppy, and Droopy. Oh, okay, okay, see, that's it. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend no more. You slipped up again. You keep changing your kids' damn names. What, 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 what's happening? What's really happening? What's popping? What's cracking, baby? What? What are you, what are you talking about? Are you fucking with us? Fucking with you? I, oh, oh, you're wrong. I would never do that. Look how vulnerable I am right now. If I was lying, would I make myself so vulnerable? Shoot. It's pretty unique dialogue. So there is some love that is put into this game from the developers. And the writing, like, it shines a little bit in this part as well. So anyways, we chose to go with Douglas first, and we have to go through this, this city and blend in with the G3 foot soldiers. And how do you do that exactly? By getting Nickelodeon slimed again. For Douglas's uh, level, there are trials they have to go through. He's kind of a recruiter for the G3. Uh, the trials are pretty easy. Uh, you just fight a few waves of enemies and just do a little platforming here and there and then you should be fine. So as mentioned before, we have to help this squid named Dr. Jupy to find his family through a series of puzzles. Now of course, you know, Douglas betrays us in the end as we reach his office. And then the boss fight continues. This boss fight is a testament to your reaction time as there are electrical floors, Douglas just jumping all over the place, he's teleporting. But the game was generous enough to provide us some enemies to regenerate our shields, some enemy, like some cannon fodder, so that way we can stay alive. After a while of shooting and you know, knifing Douglas, glob shotting Douglas. We obtain Sweezy, and she's pretty much like the Needler from Halo. <laughs> I'm not kidding. She's exactly like the Needler, design and all. So the next bounty we go with Krubus. We travel through the forest area to find a Care Bear village. Turns out the G3 was enslaving this village for manual labor just to get them and their customers high. So the goal now is to find a great prince and go to this mansion ran by a G3 crony. Now the guy in the mansion provides us with a warp device. It's very convenient since he believes that we are working with the G3. Now, I would like to take the time out to admire the environment design. Zephyr is pretty well designed for what it presents. Now, don't get me wrong, there are many other parts of the game that are nicely designed, but this is by far my most favorite map in the entire game. The trees, the elevation of the villages, hell, it even poses a threat with the poisonous lakes and rivers, with all these gaps you can traverse through. You know, it's, uh, it's really nice. We finally reach Ranchy and get the warp device to get across the gap and progress on forward. The space is a You're bridge. Fucking traffic. Hey. Holy shit, where the fuck are we? Hey, who gives a shit? I got places to be. Fuck you. Hey, both of you, shut the fuck up. I'm gonna fucking I kill you, shithead. Move your fucking car. What kind of drivers are you? Just figure it out. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> oh here we go. The NPCs in the game just doesn't like to shut up. I can't stress this enough that the dialogue welcomes itself way too often. And it just drags on till you get sick and tired of them. Oh, I can't believe what we have here. Hey, what's your big deal, bro? Oh, I can't what believe What the fuck, this dude? Stop fuck talking. You right. Fuck your mother. What kind of inconvenience is this? Fucking what are you doing? So that was some good old fashioned conflict mediation. Jeez, I didn't want to embarrass them back there, but that tunnel reeks of Fergal shit. Why are you saying this? Why is this relevant to me? Come visit any time. Just don't talk to me. 
Well, the tours yeah, are with the G3 now, so it's you best not to stick your nose well, you know what, where you're fine, doing. Wait. Oh, shit. Well. It's fine, because we have this other door that works just as well. The Stop hey, talking! Hey. Whatever. So we meet another annoying character, Helen. So we tell Helen that we're the new boss. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm Helen. I just need to know, are you the new hire or the new boss? Fuck yeah, I'm the new boss. Do I look like a wage slave to you? Let me in, I'm ready to- Okay, Sweezy, no more Reddit, because you're using words like wage slave. By the way, if you do this section of Sweezy, you can get an achievement by bossing everyone around, and that'll skip the paperwork they have to file. This part is also very annoying because it drags on for, for so long. Comedy just feels dry in this. Jesus, I think she's serious. I'm working as fast as I can. Good, I can see that. Great work, assholes. Everyone gets to take a break while I think of what I want you to do next. Send emails. Lots and lots of fucking emails. <laughs> yeah, wait. What are the emails supposed to be about? No questions. Just send emails. Anything. To anyone. Okay, yeah, you know, I just emailed my mom and I told her I hate her. Oh, yes. The Care Bears finally fire each other and we get the coordinates for Kubus's location. Afterwards, we get the warp disk. Guess where do we have to go? That's right, we gotta go back to Ranchi, and he's even more annoying than ever. He's going through withdrawals and starts crying and pleading for help as we encode Krubus' location on the disc. Oh, I'm so cold. Uh, I'm so hot. Oh, I'm fucking boiling. Did someone turn on the AC? Uh. So now it's on to the next boss fight. This one's pretty easy. But you gotta use the glob shot. You got a knife, Krubus' projectiles, so that way he can just stop in his tracks. You can do that on occasions. So after a few minutes, we obtain Gus and finally go back home. And at this point, you know, Gene kind of ran into a stalemate since there weren't any more intel after this. And then, it's time to meet the mayor of the city, Klug. So we start collaborating on taking down the G3. He gives us the information while we make his reputation look good. Very nice trade-off, you know? Very nice trade-off, I guess. Typical writing, but hey, you know, I'll take it. Hell, he even gives us a device to save humans whenever we find them in the future bounties. And now it's time to go get the next upgrade, the jetpack. Before we do that, gotta get an achievement. So there's this kid who wants to play the drums. His name is Globo, and the goal is to... Okay. <laughs> I came into a bug by accident. <laughs> we're, we're now floating in the air. <laughs> God damn it, man. Yes, yeah, it's very nice. But it's nothing that a reload can't fix. So we finally give Globo the drums and eventually buy the jetpack on back order. Well, it's time to head back home. Oh, okay. Right. Nice, guys. We get, we get a parking ticket for our house. You know, that's very funny. So funny, dude. We go to sleep, days pass on, and we get the jetpack and do the tutorial. This month at Grizzy Felsen's Joke Hole. Subo! <sighs> Damn, you're just like a TonyHawk.com jetpack pro. Of course, Kenny's making dumb references. I kind of just tuned him out at this point. We explore the city with our new jetpack and just mess around. And then I notice something. It's the music. Like, it's pretty kick-ass when it comes to Blim City at night. It's got that very nice laid-back feeling after going through so much tedious gameplay. It reminds me a lot of Pilot Red Sky. Actually, you know, who made the music? So apparently the score was made by a musician named Tobacco. Shit, with the music style and a name like that, it makes me go to the backyard at night and smoke a couple cigs. Pretty good music. So it's now time to go to the next act of the game. We have to find our new bounty, the Scrindle Brothers. Now before we face them, we got a new weapon, Creature. It's sort of like a DPS kind of weapon, which is pretty good for boss battles or large arena encounters. Now with the Scrindle Brothers, I don't like this boss, like at all. Now the first brother we face is Jonathan, who is just awful. I hate him. He constantly elbows the ground making these large rings you have to keep jumping over, floating over. And then even when you start using the platforms, he starts farting rings at you, Superman 64 style. It's the absolute worst. So we finally beat Jonathan and move on to the next brother, Angela. But first we have to infiltrate this base. 
and we come across this guy who's stuck in captive watching alien porn? So I, I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea what I'm watching. I mean, I was able to get off to it like after a while. Uh, honestly, now I love it though. Uh, not sure why they want me to jack off this much, but you know, I'm happy to do it. Like all the tentacles and the moving parts. It's, I don't know, there's something really endearing about it. Yeah, I, I like it a lot actually. I mean, if, if I ever get out of here, I, I hope I can like bring this with me at least. I mean, I, I don't even think I could go back to normal porn after this. Nice! Another comedy moment, I guess. Funny. I'm just gonna teleport you because you're starting to annoy me. So we find Angela and chase him down. So, Angela is relatively easy. You just gotta avoid the melee attacks and shoot with the creature and just do damage over time, even when they're doing a lot of movement. So after defeating Angela and discovering the next area, we run into the final brother, Mona. Now, if I had to make a tier list of the Skrindle brothers, Angela's the only one who's getting an A rank compared to Mona and Jonathan. Because they get an F for fucking awful. Cause not only do we have to deal with the stupid rings, we have to deal with a bunch of puddles of waste on the ground that probably never goes away. <laughs> and here's the kicker. They form into this stack called Brotron. They've been handing my ass to me for so long, I had to stop recording and do the boss battle off screen. So after about a solid 20 minutes, I finally beat them because Angela's super crazy Scrussy took me out before I stopped the fucking recording. Scrindle Brothers are the worst boss in the whole game, and you know what? I will die on this hill. So after getting their samples and shit, Garmantuous has some choice words for us. You know, some Saturday morning cartoon type shit, you know? So annoying. We gotta go on to the next bounty. What the, what the hell? Who is this guy? Is this supposed to be Tweeg? Hey, I, I'm Tweeg. I'm dating your sister. Uh, this fucking guy. Tweeg. You need to leave. You're just gonna let this sack of shit eat all my friend alos and tongue kiss your sister? I'm the one who Great. bought those fucking Great. friend alos. Are you? He doesn't even love you. He's just after our house. It's our house. Don't you have exactly. a galaxy to fuck? Come on, tell him to I leave. I am sick of your shit. All you do is sit on our like, couch. Shut up! Oh, I want to do the next bounty! Life is. Hey, you stop you can fucking use talking! Use I don't care if you stay or leave! He just drags on for so long! The next bounty is Dr. Giblets. So we go around town to see who can lead us to the trail. Oh no, the desktop stripper's back. Take it off! She's back! Get it off! Not many people are very useful except for these two. Some yellow guy from Toy Story's Pizza Planet and Blordo, our warp disc salesman. Blordo directs us into the deeper end of the slums. So the store we have to reach, get this, is named... High on life store in the slums. He said it! He said the thing! He said the thing! So after some combat encounters, we finally reach the drugstore. High on life. Turns out, there's a midnight release of a human bong. It's our job to investigate the whereabouts of Dr. Jibbs because he's the owner of this store. Now, virtually no one was useful in this store whatsoever. And then next, you know, we come into some space feds. CIA or ops for some shit. This game got me all paranoid and shit. Looking out my window, knocking on my walls for feds. Don't do that ever again. But now there's a new upgrade. Shoes we can walk on walls with. Stolen from some dead person named Davy Glutes. So apparently their friend doesn't look too shaken up about this at all. Hell, they even say their friend is a terrible person. Some some nice morning moment there. It's very nice, very class act. <clears throat> right, so we're on our way back to talk to Gene and, about giblets. And the CIA is back in my house. What do you want? The Torg family, or what's left of it anyway. They got mixed up with a bad crowd. The G3 cartel, or more specifically... Dr. John Giblets, PhD. And Cloud wants it squashed, pronto. He says you're the right bounty hunter for the job. Ah, oh, they, they work for Clug. These guys provide us some information to find Giblets. Now, of course, we have to talk to Clug. He gives us a warp disc to the base. We gotta go back to Zephyr and use that warp disc. Now, of course, there's some uncovered parts of Zephyr that we have to go across, which I don't have an issue with. Oh, no, an injured Care Bear. Let's keep it company till it passes away. Okay. Now I feel it. Here I go. Oh, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh. Uh. Fuck, that rips my heart out. All right, he's dead. Let's go. Mm. Hey, nope. hey, where, where are you guys Just going? Gotta you, go back. You promised me to stay with me until I, until I die. Hey, hey, thanks for coming back. Oh, here, here I go. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, now he's gone. All right, shit. I, I I guess that's it then. Hey, hey, what oh, the fuck? Oh, oh, what a surprise! I'm, I'm not dead yet, asshole. If you leave me again, I swear to God, I'm gonna kill myself. Oh, this really hurts. Good, 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 bye. Hey. Oh, oh. Okay, this time it's gotta be real. Let, 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 let's just get out of here. It's it's depressing. Hey, hey, guys, I'm still alive. Right, you're testing you my need patience. to come back here and stay with me. Okay, fuck this, guys. 
I, I'm, I'm fine. You had to do it. You, you had to put him out of his misery. It was like a really annoying horse with a broken leg. You, you know? It, it, do you understand? Is there an equivalent to broken leg? You, you following here? So we trace clues to get to the next area. Rinse and repeat. So we come across this new gun. Let's do it. He'll come in handy for later. So the final clues are done, and it's time to confront giblets. Oh. <laughs> He's dead from an accident. Easy clap, I guess. But of course, we aren't getting off that easy. You know, there's a fail safe for when he dies. That's right. We get a knockoff of Batman from Gotham Knights. If you're watching this, I'm dead. Now, don't you worry. We get around in that game, just gotta be patient. We deal with an annoying amount of waves and glitched enemies until finally, he realizes that he accidentally died. Okay, this is my final message. If you still have to hear this, then I've made a great mistake. I was wrong. Only one person could have survived all of that. Myself! I killed myself! Oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. It makes sense, you know. I don't get the guts to do it one of these days. Good for me. Then there. So, okay, I killed myself. Whoops. My apologies to whoever's hearing this. I hope you'll forgive me for making you go through all of that. You can leave now. Have a good day. Giblet's out. R.I.P. Giblet. Took a while, but, you know, whatever. I'll take it. Uh, I'll take that victory any day. We obtain Let's Do It from the lab and regroup with Gene back home and see if we can repair this fucking gun, this final Gatlion. Now suddenly, we have to look out for Lizzie because she hasn't been home. She's probably been out with Twig or whatever. I don't really care. Kenny tells us we have to put the rest of the Gatlion since he wants to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with us. So now it's time to go back to Applebee's. We gotta go back to the slums. We gotta go to downtown slums. So we get there and Kenny is just so eager to spill his guts about how he put his planet in danger. Okay, so you remember what happened on my home planet, Gatlas? It got taken over by the G3, like yours. You know, all my people got enslaved. You, you, you remember that, right? You know all that, right? Sorry, of course you do. Well, um, what if it was kind of, you know, just a little tiny bit entirely my fault? Uh, okay, I, I can see you're at a loss for words. I, I, I know how it sounds. I'm not the only reason the G3 invaded Gatlas. I'm just the only reason they even knew about it in the first place. Now, of course, this is a very interesting plot point until Kenny started being a dick to the waiter. Do you see where I'm going with this? We fought them off at first, you know, but they came back with some super virus that damn near zombified everyone. You know, a few of us were immune. We formed a rebellion. It was led by Let's Do It. He was my best friend, my mentor. He was one of the strongest Gatlians who ever lived and I, I got him killed. In his dying moments, I told him everything, like I'm telling you now, about how I left Gatlas to pal around with a criminal, how I led Garmantuous and the G3 right to our planet, how I got everyone killed, except Let's Do It survived. Somehow, the G3 must have kept him alive to try to utilize his power. God, if we can really bring him back, do, do, do you see my problem, right? Like, I, I'm gonna have to tell the other guns what I did, you know, or else he'll tell them. All right, I'm back. Hope those tummies are ready for some yummies. Bon appetit. Dude, take a fucking hint. Can't you see we're in the middle of a thing here? Emotional thing. Uh, you know, this is important baggage shit. Because they were simply doing their job. Now, of course, Kenny also reveals to the rest of the Gatlians that he is responsible for what happened. They're not happy about this, and they treat Kenny like trash until we reach our next bounty, Nipulon. But first, we have to deal with Lizzie and Tweak drama. Don't care. Next! Now it's time to blend in with G3 to reach Nipulon. If you could. Oh, no can do, partner. See, my little gooper trooper, you're as sick as can be. Looks like he's not gonna make it. Truth be told, I don't think I'll ever be gooping anybody ever again. Oh! Unless we the get provider is sick. So we have to deal with more family drama by helping the emotionally distraught Mac and Cheese brothers to get confirmation whether their dad loves them or not. Now we come to the conclusion after an easy duel, tell them the truth, but yet they accept the reality and have created some sort of bridge to get us across the way. Now finally I was able to heal the goop guy and sneak into the spot. The stealth was an option until seeing the aliens smoke humans in a very graphic manner. We lose our shit and go crazy. This bounty, 
We have to scale up to the office, which is easy for navigation. This game has given us a break with the Metroidvania aspect. And then it's time to go for the second in command, Nipulon. We've reached their office. Never mind, we gotta deal with Helen. Again. All right, now it's time for Nipulon. This guy has the coordinates to our home planet Earth. Now this boss is very annoying, but what's even better, he makes some really dumb jokes just to add on top of the experience. Take this one that says you spent all your in-game playtime at an alien strip club. Oh, that's permanent, by the way. Everyone on your friends list can see that forever now. <laughs> Another hole. What, what is this? The, the, the hit indie game Donut County, which I highly recommend if you're playing this right now. But, you know, look, you pick it up. It's, only, it's sometimes on sale. Uh, all right, Justin, look. I'm not going to disagree, all right? I put plenty of hours in Donut County. Thanks for that shout out. All right, that's it. I'm gonna erase all your game data now. I can do that. It's easy. You'll have to start. Oh yeah, nice doki doki literature club. Yeah, that's a very nice touch you got there, okay. Justin. No shit, you're still here. I don't actually know how to do that. Never mind. Forget this. Now, of course, after that drug trip, the Gatlians have come to reconcile their differences, and we do this very badass scene in the game after what Nipulon put us through. We regroup to Gene with some good news. Let's do what has been fixed to what I understand is half capacity. His memory was wiped, so there's not much he can really do about that. Gene has advised us to go ahead and face Garmantuous and prepared us a bomb to take him down. Now, the road to Garmantuous was a long one. Several ways of enemies blocked our path. But, you know, let's do it is a very good weapon, simply because he reminds me of the BFG from the Doom series. It does a lot of damage across multiple waves, especially a very, very big gang of enemies. Wave after wave after wave after wave, it's finally time to face the big guy. After about a couple deaths, I was able to take down Garmantuous. I usually had to swap between Let's Do It and Creature for DPS reasons. But now we've come to our final moment. Let's blow this fucker up! It's time for the G3 to become the G0. Suck my ass! Okay, what's wrong? Is, 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 is it broken? God damn it, Gene, the remote's busted! Oh, shit! Oh, hello! Nope. <laughs> We're trapped into a bubble. Uh, hey, it's me, Jack Black. Hi, I'm Susan Sarandon. And me, Jack Black? Susan Sarandon? Why? What? Why? Oh, okay, and they just die for no reason. Now we have to come down to sacrificing one of the Gatlands. Now, of course, we use the Let's Do It because Kenny wanted to be a martyr. You know, I don't want to give him the satisfaction, if I'm going to be honest. And plus, it really doesn't matter what choices you make because... Let's do it, let alone any other Gatling and survives the blast. Oh my god, it was a huge sacrifice, but we did it. Oh, 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 shit, is done! Come out to us, is dead! He's fucking dead! Rest in peace, fucker. Good work, bounty hunter! What about- Do, do you think they- There's no way they could have survived that! What a noble sacrifice. God, they, they, they're alive! I can't believe it! Oh my god, they survived! They made it! No fucking way! Do, do you think they... What? I'm so glad you're okay, and that maybe we can have a sequel with you, with us, you know, all of us, because you're alive still, you know, and then you'd be there for, like, any DLC or a sequel. We owe you big time. The whole universe owes you. Now you're a fucking hero. I'm so glad you made it. We did it! So that's the game. Garmantuous dies and we head back home and celebrate our victory. Now, of course, the game officially ends there and we regroup with Gene after the credits. He gives me this half-assed congratulations speech. Everything's kind of just going to be the same for a bit. News takes a while to travel. There's still going to be G3 guys to fight everywhere. But, uh, good job. <laughs> Seriously. Now, of course... I'm not gonna be scathingly negative compared to sites like Eurogamer. God damn, he fucking hates this game. There is some charm to this game, and some parts show love when it comes to the development. The environment is definitely something to write home about, the music was well put together, and this was based on my music taste. Now, of course, this may differ for some people, but I, I personally enjoyed the music. And the combat slightly makes up for the negatives I have with the game, and that is of course the world building, the dialogue, the comedy, and the length of the game. This game took about 10 hours for me to complete from start to finish. Now, of course, my Xbox profile may say differently, but that's only because I had to go back to certain parts and express some points in my review. I'd also like to point out that there's 
literally no replay value to this game. It's like I pretty much want to be booting a new save file and do the same thing over and over again. And plus, $60 is a bit of an asking price for a game that is basically interdimensional Cable 3. You know, Part 2 was already painful enough to get through when that came out. You know, at least something, at least an episode like Rick's Theme Minutes was enjoyable, being that this was reminiscent of that technique of retro scripting. You know, with shows like Home Movies and uh, Dr. Cats. Now, if this game's humor is for you, I can understand your position. And, and that's coming from a fan of the show. You know, I'm not part of the fandom, but, you know, I do definitely like the show for what it offers. But there definitely needs to be a separation when it comes to Rick and Morty and High on Life. Rick and Morty is a show that is 22 minutes long and 10 episodes per season. So the best that Justin and his writing team has to offer is right then and there. But when it comes to High on Life, this is a 10 hour game and the writing team just throws anything and everything at you and hopes something sticks. Narrative and video games have evolved and there are some standards set in place. You know, sometimes too much dialogue is not the best route and this is definitely one of those cases. This game is very annoying. It reminds me of like a Twitch hot tub streamer. Okay, so let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I would hope that the people over at Squanch Games can write a more compelling story with some better humor. This was just a big budget game for the sake of cameos. Now, this was not a positive thing to open 2023 with, but you know, this, I had a lot to say about this game. But until next time, I hope I don't experience a fever dream like this ever again. <laughs>